Hello, I'm Smitty Halibut. Uh, welcome to part two of my 20 meter Moxon antenna build video. Uh, last week I got the support structure set up and I found out that my fiberglass poles were too short and they weren't actually supporting the wires up, so I wasn't able to get the thing to a testable point. Uh, I, the first set of poles I ordered took forever to come in from China, and I was, so I was expecting the second set of poles to take similarly long, but turns out they're in. Um, that small one here in front of my face is the uh, the smaller poles and that is the diameter of the bigger poles so I'm going to be very curious to see whether I can fit these onto the support structures that I made last time by the way I'll link to the previous video below or it'll be in the same playlist uh, make sure you watch that one before this one and this will make a heck of a lot more sense uh, but I used hose clamps in the last time to hold the fiberglass poles down to the plastic support structure, but I was using, I was uh, planning on that diameter pole, not that diameter pole. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see whether we can make this fit or not. Uh, but these poles, the big, bigger diameter ones, are a lot longer as well, which means that they will be able to support the wire, uh, and which means that they will be thicker as you get out to the proper length, which is about 12 and a half to 13 feet. So these will be able to support the wire up a heck of a lot better. Um, it's still multiple telescoping, let's see if I can do this without, you know, multiple telescoping sections of fiberglass uh, pipe in there, all the way down to the super thin, um, you know, little whip of a fiberglass rod. I don't plan on using the super thin ones down at the end of the, of the fishing pole, uh, so I'm going to actually remove those from it entirely, so it'll just be the thick sections, uh, the s thick and therefore strong support sections. Um, so I'm going to go see if I can get that in through the pipe clamps or the hose clamps on the support structure that I made last weekend, and we'll see how that works out. Be right back. Oops. That's not going to fit. <laughs> uh, and that is out as far as it'll go. Um... I'm going to need to buy some more and bigger hose clamps. Well, that's unfortunate. Time to take a trip to the hardware store. All right, I've got my new hose clamps, uh, but I before I go try to hose clamp in the new fiberglass poles, uh, I need to make sure I get them to the right length, and I want to remove the excess sections so that they aren't uh, rattling around inside and adding extra weight and whatnot. So um, what I did is I extended out, I don't know if you can see this, um, I ex wow, that is the sun, isn't it? I extended both poles out. Their handles are over here. And then, let's go to the other side of me. Um, then, you know, there's the old thin one. Um, you know, that is the tip. If you can see the little red thing floating around, that is the tip of the old thin one. And then the bigger, the new big one extends all the way out here. So it's another foot or two longer. Uh, and it's also much firmer and more rigid out here at the end. So this should be able to support the antenna just fine. I had to take these out, take out the extra sections now, uh, because once I get them hose clamped, once I get the fat end hose clamped into the support structure, I'm not going to be able to take the pieces out. Uh, so I had to go do that now. I'm debating whether I want to put one more piece in there just to make darn sure that I've got all the extra length. Um, but I think I'm willing to risk it because this is another two feet. I don't think I had another two feet worth of um, worth of wire on the 20 meter Moxon loop. So I think I'll be good with this one. I've got the new hose clamps over there. I'm going to go uh, put them through the board and get this all clamped down. Okay. So I got the big pole strapped on there. I've got the bigger hose clamps and they seem to work even though the spacing between the slots that I cut is awfully small. You'll notice how the kind of the hose clamp kind of, let's see if I can do this. Nope, I can't. Um, I don't know if you can notice how the hose clamp here is kind of um, in. It doesn't go straight down from the, from the uh, fiberglass pole. It kind of goes in a little bit. Anyway, the slots are awfully close to each other, uh, closer than I would prefer, but it works. This is solid, it's not going anywhere. So uh, I also got rather larger than strictly necessary hose clamps. These are a little bit longer than they need to be. Anyway, I'm going to go um, do that for the other three. All right. So got all of those 
put on. I can whack myself in the head if I want to. Uh, but all of those are hose clamped on. Again, hose clamps are a little long, but that's okay. We got them in place. Now it's time to start stringing out the wire. So a reminder, I've got my ballon here. It's got a little support wire here. Uh, not wire, excuse me, uh, guy line. And then I've got the, the antenna wire here that I'm gonna go stretch out these fiberglass supports and string the wire to the end of. So let's go do that and see what that looks like. All right, so I have the wire strung up. Let's see if we can get to a better spot where we can see it. Uh, I don't know if this is gonna be temporary or permanent, but kind of used uh, some electrical tape just kind of wrapped around the wire on the pole directly. But you can see that it's still kind of droopy as the fiberglass is trying to support the weight of the wire. There we go, trying to get it to white balance over there, but it still kind of droops down. Um, with the tension of the wire, I should be able to get it to kind of droop up a little bit. But I think I have to lift all four poles at the same time and I don't know how I'm going to be able to do that at least not by myself so I got to figure that out but we have an antenna it is strung up the wires are taut ish about as taut as I expect from being supported out at you know 13 or 12 and a half foot 13 foot lever arms um, that might work It is a little lower to the ground than I was hoping, uh, so it's going to be hard to test, hook up an antenna analyzer and test it here. I might have to kind of pack it up and take it off to a, a park somewhere, set it up there and see if I can test it, or put up a temporary mast. That tripod there will actually push up to quite a height, so it might be worth me trying to, uh, to do that. But let's see what happens. Well, that's looking better. Um, my poles are drooping up now. Well, that's good. It's because I put these uh, more strings up to the top of the mast. So I'm actually supporting the ends of the fiberglass pole with a uh, fishing line. The same fishing line I used to support the ballon over there. So now it droops up instead of drooping down. Still droops a little bit because that's kind of low. I don't know if there's a way to kind of spread these apart a the, uh, little bit more. Uh, without just rotating the whole thing. I don't know. But it's up in the sky enough that if I move that barbecue and that big umbrella over there, I can kind of get it out of the way of the near field of that antenna, and I might actually be able to do some, uh, do some testing. Let's give it a shot. Well, darn. Um, that's the resonant frequency. Nice SWR of 1.2 that cable's on fierce. Nice SWR of 1.2. Unfortunately, it's at 15.4 megahertz, which is rather a lot high, uh, which means that the wires are short, which means unless I have any friends who are willing to lend me a cable stretcher, I'm going to have to uh, cut a whole new loop. And I don't know what cable lengths to use because I got that from a calculator Either that or all of the metal around it is um, affecting the resonant frequency. I don't know how well how that works. But let's take a look at it. So I've got wire here. I moved the barbecue, but I still have that metallic table and that umbrella. Uh, we still have the metal poles on the fence there uh, and the metal on the tripod. So it's entirely possible that getting this up and away from all of that metal will lower the resonant frequency. But that is an awfully high resonant frequency. That is a full megahertz up at 14 megahertz, which is what, six or 7%? Um, that's pretty darn high, less than 10%. But um, actually, no, it's pretty close to 10% because my design target was 14.2 and it was at 15.4. So that's a 1.2 megahertz 
which is, you know, eight or nine, eight percent or so, that's not very good. Um, yeah, so the only thing I can do at this point is to try and put it up and see if that changes it. But that's going to be kind of a big, expensive, pain-in-the-butt process to do just to see whether that actually fixes the problem or not. So I don't know what my next path forward from here is going to be, but uh, I'll figure it out and I'll do it. But for right now, I think I'm done in the immediate term because I still need to put the mast up um, before I can get it up out of the air or in the air. Um, and I have the pipe sections to do that. I guess I can start working on that, but uh, that might be a different video just so that I can have a separate video for putting up the mast because it's kind of not tied to this particular antenna. In any case, all right, so quick update on the resonant frequency issue. I think actually the antenna is resonant, um, but potentially because of all of the stuff that's nearby it, it is lowering the radiation resistance. I don't know, I don't fully understand that part, but if you look at the antenna analyzer, the output at 14.2, it's got a pretty low X component of the, of the SWR. So it's reactive is only four ohms. Whereas, sorry, I'm gonna have to point you at my face while I do this. Whereas when I tune, oh, that's okay. When I tune, oh, that's weird. Uh, when I tune to uh, minimum SWR, about 1.2, 1.3, it's up at 13 ohms X. Um, resonance is not always the lowest SWR. Resonance is the lowest reactance. Um, and then the antenna has a characteristic resistive impedance at resonance. Lowest SWR is where you operate the radio so that it is a closest matched to 50 ohms, uh, which in the 50 ohms being a vector combination of the resistive and the reactive impedance. Um, so what that looks like to me is that it's got a 1.2 SWR up at 15.4, but when I tune that back down to 14.2, It's got a lower reactive component to the uh, to the SWR, but the resistive component is super low as well. So that's just too low of a resistive component. And so the question is, is that why, is that caused by all of the nearby metallic bits around my antenna? The other thing to note is that it's an SWR of you know 3.2 at 14.18 megahertz, but if I bring that up to the top end of the band. At about 3.5, it drops to 2.4 megahertz, or 2.4 SWR. So that's well within the range of a tuner. A tuner should be able to bring this down into a usable range, um, or, you know, usable SWR range. So I'm actually kind of hopeful that if I get this away from all of the nearby metallic bits, that it will, um, uh, that the resistive component of the SWR or of the, of the load impedance will improve, that is to say, get closer to 50 ohms when I am at a reactive minimum down around zero ohms or, you know, four or five ohms, so minimal reactance, um, thereby improving the SWR. I admit I'm kind of pulling this out of my stinky place. I don't know exactly for sure that this is how the antennas work, but I do know that resonance does not mean lowest SWR. Resonance means lowest reactive component. Um, and the reactive component is lower at my design frequency than it is up at the um, 50 ohm point. So uh, I'm hopeful, and we'll see what happens. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, I'm Smitty Halibut. You can uh, grab a hold of me on Twitter if you want to chat. Uh, I'm Smitty Halibut there as well, or you can post in the comments below here in, on YouTube. I will respond to all of that. Um, once I get this thing up in the air, I've got an antenna mast I need to build. Once I get this thing up in the air, I will uh, build another video, put together another video, and be able to show you the test results of that. In the meantime, go off and do awesome things. Be good humans, and thank you very much for watching.